All right, everybody. So we are starting our morning off here in Arashiyama. Looks absolutely delicious. So that was Tenryuji Temple. And now, maybe you can tell the next place we're going. To start our day off in Arashiyama, we took the Randen tram to reach Randen Arashiyama Station. This is the best place to start your day sightseeing because you can actually see a site right nearby, which is actually called the Kimono Forest, as displayed here. The Kimono Forest actually has a cool little ball called Pond of Dragon, which is said to grant a wish because of a dragon that once landed in Arashiyama. From here, we headed down the streets of the main area of Arashiyama, and we came across a little sweet stand selling one of my favorite delights, which is Ichigo Daifuku, which is sort of like a mochi snack. Let's check it out. Hi right, everybody, here I have Ichigo Daifuku, which is like a strawberry mochi. Looks absolutely delicious. Mmm, that's so good. So fresh. All right, everybody. So we are starting our morning off here in Arashiyama. We're visiting the famous Arashiyama Bamboo Grove. It's been five years since I've been here and it's actually not that busy. Of course, Japan just opened up from COVID restrictions and it's really beautiful, a little chilly, but the bamboo actually seems like they're in really good shape. I remember a while ago, a lot of people were complaining that tourists, rightfully still complaining, were engraving like their initials and carving into the bamboo and ruining it, which is really a shame. But right now it's really beautiful. And just as I remember it, luckily just a little less rain. There are many little gems and sites you can see along the Arashiyama Bamboo Grove, such as Nonomiya Jinja Shrine, a really quaint little Shinto shrine tucked right off the side from the Bamboo Grove. It's cool to take a little look and see one of many shrines, which I'm sure you'll see while visiting beautiful Kyoto, Japan. From the shrine, you can head back towards the main path where you will find yourself lost and immersed in countless bamboo that are so beautiful and green and tall, making you feel like you truly are in a one-of-a-kind forest while being in Kyoto, Japan. Beautiful, elegant bamboo. From the bamboo forest, I recommend you head back towards the path you once came from, go to your left to enter the Tenruji Temple. Now the Tenruji Temple is Arashiyama's most important temple and one of the must-sees in the area and in all of Kyoto. It has a really big, wide, encompassing garden with lots of little meandering paths, including these stairs, which take you up to give a really good view of the temple grounds and maybe even some of Arashiyama in Kyoto and the mountains behind you. After taking your time walking throughout the garden, you will reach sort of the main area by the Sogen Pond Garden. No Japanese temple and garden is complete without a beautiful pond, especially with mountains and these beautiful turning trees that you're seeing here right now. But the Hojo buildings will definitely take your breath away as well with a beautiful traditional brown and white sort of wooded architecture in the open interior, which has that samurai sort of castle look to it with the tatami mats and the Japanese characters written in the background. There are so many details and little touches that you can take in. Just take your time here and just fully feel the Zen and relax by walking in and taking in everything you can see in Tenruji Temple.
Alright everybody, so that was Tenryuji Temple. One of the great things you must do in Rashiyama. You do the Bimbu Grove, right nearby, and you can just immediately, right to it, go to Tenryuji Temple. Really beautiful, definitely worth the 500 yen to check out the garden. And you can check out the hall if you want to for an extra 300 yen to make it 800 yen total. So let's check out some more fun things you have to do in Arashiyama. Back towards the Randen Arashiyama station, we came across, unexpectedly, the biggest gem of our whole time in Arashiyama. This is a local matcha shop, which name in English I unfortunately do not know. It is run by this incredibly nice lady who is very friendly and even showed us how to whisk and make our own matcha from scratch. Here is Vanessa doing her best, coming up in just a second. As expected, the matcha was delicious, had that wonderful earthy but not too bitter and a little bit of that natural sweetness, and of course had the wonderful hospitality that the lady showed us. She had lots of stuff on sale, such as little snacks and tools to make the matcha yourself. You have to stop by here and definitely support her business and buy as many things as you can fit in your suitcase. I promise you, you will not regret it. All right, everybody, so another thing you have to do in Kyoto is check out the Tugetsukyo Bridge, which leads from Arashiyama to Arashiyama as well, but a different part, right by the mountains. It's super beautiful and scenic, and you can just walk across the way and get some nice views of the mountains surrounding you, <clears throat> or just sit by the river and just enjoy the views, have a snack, really romantic and nice as well. So it's another cool thing to check out in Arashiyama, not too far away from the train station, and yeah, just really cool, must do. That is all. Walking across the Tolgetsukyo Bridge will give you great views of the surrounding area of Arashiyama, including mountains, little trees making it like they're clouds going up the hillside, and of course the Katsura River, where on a day you could potentially see lots of boats and people just enjoying and relaxing in nature. Got to love it. Alright, we just went over the Tolgetsukyo Bridge, and now maybe you can tell the next place we're going is a 20 minute walk uphill, and then we're going to show you some of our friends that aren't so different from us. To begin your journey to Arashiyama Monkey Park Iwatiyama, you'll first go up these stairs where you're surrounded by these beautiful red lanterns and have to head through a red Tori gate, which is entering a little bit of a shrine area before you actually begin the real hiking path. The hike itself is fairly easy. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes to get to, but the uh, incline is relatively little. There is even a monkey quiz along the way and other sort of little background informations. It will give you more context about the park, the monkey is on display, how to act around them appropriately, and so you can learn and get a better, more enriching experience before you ultimately reach the playground area to see some humans playing and of course, maybe your first sight of Japanese macaques. Oh, there's a bunch of them from the ceiling. They're so furry. <laughs> However, the kids seem like they're enjoying the slide a little bit more than the monkeys. Speaking of self down. Once you finish your hike, you will officially be at the visitor's area of the monkey park where the monkeys are, and you can also get some really good views of the surrounding area. The visitor's area is actually on top of the mountain where you're 160 meters above sea, giving you some great sort of open views of Kyoto, Arashiyama, showing you mountains, the surrounding towns, and maybe even some attractions. But let's check out the monkeys, that's why we came here in the first place. There are 120 monkeys in all that live at the monkey park and they are freely roaming and you can watch them play, jump, interact and it is so wonderful to see them being treated humanely and expressing themselves and maybe even trying to ride a bicycle. Mm. 
Oh no. That was like playing at the water. And the fish came and got scared. <laughs> However, the coolest part about this monkey park is you can actually feed these cute little monkeys via the feeding room where you are inside and they are outside. You feed them through a fence safely, but the monkeys are not trapped. It is your decision to be trapped as a human being to feed them and then leave when you want and the monkeys can leave when they want. Everyone is happy. After we got our fair share of monkey business, we went back down the monkey park, back across the Katsura River into the main town area of Arashiyama. We were a bit hungry from the hike, so it was time to get some more street food, such as a potato croquet, which is one of my favorite things in the entire world. Who doesn't love potatoes, especially when they are fried? You can also get a pickle on a stick, which is, well, a pickle on a stick. I don't like the way you're looking at that pickle. Oh my gosh. We then returned to the station where there was a lot of different cool traditional performances, mostly including some authentic Japanese musical instruments, such as the shamisen. And this really cool harp-like instrument. It's so good. Mm -hmm. A little hidden gem in Arashiyama, right by the tram station, is a little bit of a footpath, a foot onsen, which is perfect, perfect if you're doing the walk up to the monkey park like us or trekking through the bamboo forest. Don't do a whole onsen, but you still want to relax and enjoy it. Make sure to check this out, guys. It's a little hidden gem. Not many uh, locals or locals use it, but not many tourists do. So we're gonna get our tickets, only 200 yen a person, and hit that up. Although the foot onsen wasn't quite the whole traditional Japanese onsen experience, it was so nice and very much needed after a long day of walking through, you saw guys, Arashiyama, going up mountains, through gardens, and running away from monkeys. Not be definitely away from monkeys, but definitely had to do a lot of work on our feet that day. And it felt great, and it was really cheap, and really calm and peaceful. We then had to make it back the way we came, but the Kimono Forest actually lights up at night, making it even more beautiful to check out. So that was our day in Arashiyama. Please follow for more Japan content. Peace!